Hello, in this video I want to show you a math book that is good for beginners who already know some algebra and are looking to learn more algebra and learn trigonometry. The book is called Precalculus and it is by Sullivan and this is the seventh edition. I don't know if there is a newer edition out now, but I will try to find some copies and leave links in the description in case you want to buy the book or in case you want to read uh, other people's reviews. So this book I bought used and Chicago State University, it covers everything you need if you were to go to college and take a pre-calc course or take a trigonometry course. It also has all of the algebra that you learn in like previous courses. So if you were to take a college algebra course, this would have that information as well. This is a good book because it has so much content. It's an actual textbook, look how thick it is. And so I think it's important to keep that in mind when you're shopping around for math books. If, like, if you're doing price comparisons, like if you're comparing this to like a workbook, this is always gonna cost more because it's such a big thick book with so much content. Uh, this book is really thick. So if you compare this to you know, pre-calc books from the 60s and 70s, there's definitely been a transformation in textbooks. So this book uh, is typically more user-friendly than older books. There are some older books that are really good, but this is a very modern book. It's got a very modern layout. Let's take a look at the topics. It starts with graphs and then functions and their graphs. Polynomial and rational functions. That's chapter three. So a very similar outline to other modern books. Oops, skip a page here, let's come back. Chapter four is on exponential and logarithmic functions. And so right there, those, those first four chapters uh, form a pretty good basis for basic algebra. So if you wanted to learn basic algebra, these first four chapters cover quite a bit, right? Quite a bit of stuff. Not everything, but quite a bit. Then five goes into trigonometry, trigonometric functions, angles and their measure, trigonometric functions, the unit circle approach, properties of trigonometric functions, graphs of sine and cosine functions, graphs of tangent, cotangent, cosecant, and secant functions. He does a lot of examples of this um, in the book. He does a good job. That's typically something people don't like. Uh, people don't like graphing. And so whenever you get lots of examples in a book of graphing, I think that's good because that helps people. Then he talks about curve feeding as well. Analytic trigonometry. Then over here we have applications of trigonometric functions, polar coordinates and vectors, and then we have analytic geometry, and then systems of equations and inequalities. So tons of mathematics uh, in a book like this. It keeps going, right? It just keeps going. 11 is on sequences, induction, and the binomial theorem. 12 is on counting and probability. And 13 is a preview of calculus. So it's really cool that it has calculus in it. A lot of uh, pre-calc books don't have calculus in them, so I think it's really cool that this one does have calculus in it. Um, so that's a big plus. Then it's got an appendix, which has some reviews. Most people don't look at the appendices, but sometimes it's kind of fun because it makes you feel smart because it's review. <laughs> so if you're learning something and you're having a hard time, uh, the appendices sometimes are a bit refreshing because they have content that is a little bit easier. Then it talks about graphing utilities here at the end. And then it has answers. Let's look at the answers. So, yep, it's got answers to the odd-numbered questions. And look at this. This is the, uh, these are the identities. And it actually goes through and it shows you how to do the trigonometric identities. So, just amazing, right? What a great book. What a great book. Yeah, very nice. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at just some random examples from the book. Here's an example. Finding an equation of a hyperbola center not at the origin. So this is something you would study uh, in a pre-calc class. A hyperbola is an example of something called a conic. And at least in my personal experience from teaching pre-calculus, conic sections are the hardest thing for students to learn in a pre-calculus class. They have a really hard time with it. At the same time, it's one of my favorite things to teach because the problems are so fun. So the question says, find an equation for the hyperbola with center at one negative two, 
one focus at 4, negative 2, and, and one vertex at 3, negative 2. And then so the solution here, you know, he just starts with just using the formulas and stuff and explaining. But the way I do it is I first draw a picture, and from the picture you can get everything. So you just draw a quick sketch of the hyperbola, and then from that you can get all of the necessary information in order to, to do the problem. So you know, discussing the equation of a hyperbola. So he has lots of examples. Lots of examples. Yeah. Here it talks about the asymptotes of a hyperbola. These are the asymptotes for a hyperbola with center at the origin. The asymptotes uh, change when the center is somewhere else. Here you can see it's the formula for the asymptotes in the center is hk. Let's jump to something else. Let's see, random page. Law of signs. That's something that is um, taught in a trig class. So this is some of the trigonometry here. Look at all these exercises. These are the identities we were looking at earlier in the solutions manual, and the, rather in the answers in the back. Um, it, it almost looked like a solutions manual, right? Because it had, it had the full solutions, which is, which is kind of weird. A lot of textbooks, when it comes to the identities, they don't even have answers in the back. So that's kind of cool. Look at all of those problems. I love these. This is something that people um, who take trig also don't like. It's funny, I'm opening up the book to things that people don't like, um, but I love it. I think it's so fun. They're like little mini proofs, and um, I think if you like trigonometric identities, that is in some sense foreshadowing whether or not you're going to uh, like mathematics. So yeah, really, really cool. Two functions f and g are said to be identically equal if f of x equals g of x for every value of x in which both functions are defined. Yeah, it's a precursor to the identity section. Here it talks about more trig. Logarithms, so logarithms are something that um, you would study in a algebra class and also in a pre-calc class. So it's kind of weird because you do it in two classes and I, I've known a lot of people, um, specifically teachers who say, I don't understand why we're teaching logarithms in this class and then we're teaching it again in, in the class right after. Like, why do you have to teach it twice? And I guess you don't, um, and I, I guess the reason it is taught twice, and this is just my opinion, is because it's hard, right? It's, it's really tough. I learned logarithms in an algebra class, and I did not understand um, these properties. In fact, I ended up getting a, a B in my college algebra class because of the logarithms. I, I did terrible on the test. Now I love logarithms, and they totally make sense. So. It's just a good example of, some, of how sometimes it just takes time to get better at math. Here's an example of a logarithmic equation with two logs. So for this one, you would start by um, combining the logs using the product rule for logs. And then here they just used their 4 to the first power is equal to all of that. That's what they did there. Um, you could show work by exponentiating both sides, but they didn't do that. They just wrote it to an exponential expression. So they converted it from logarithmic form to exponential. And then they simplified, and then you get two answers. And you should always check your answers. And they, they didn't do that here. Instead of checking their answers, what they did was at the beginning, they found the domain uh, of the variable uh, in the equation. In other words, what, for what values of x will this equation possibly make sense? So they, they did that right at the beginning. So you could do that instead of having to check at the end. A lot of other books will check at the end. So this is an interesting approach and perhaps one worth uh, investigating. So here's an exponential equation. Oh, that looks fun. Oh, that's cool. Look, they write 4 to the x as 2 to the 2 to the x. And so basically you get a quadratic equation in 2 to the x. Kind of fun. So you see, you get some interesting examples and solutions in books. Even though there's other really great pre-calc books out there, a lot of times they have different names like algebra and trig uh, or other names. They, they basically all have the same content for the most part. But they all have different examples, they all have slightly different exercises, and they all have, you know, different explanations, so you get a different perspective. So that's why I think it's cool to have lots of books, because you can get different perspectives. This one has a really cool cover, I like it. Again, it's Pre-Calculus 7th Edition, and it's the book by Sullivan. So yeah, this is a great book for beginners. If you already know some algebra, and you want to learn more, and you want to learn trig, this is the book for you. If you're just starting out with algebra, you could get this book, but 
it just depends on what your level is. Like if your level is really, really basic, you might want to start with like pre-algebra or something like that. But anyways, it's a cool book. I like it. I hope it's been helpful and I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, good luck and take care.